Hello! Today we're going to take a look at how to set up custom history tracking with a SharePoint list using Power Automate. It's common that we're doing tracking in SharePoint. We have lists that help us know what the current status is on projects and tasks and other various information. And that does a good job to show us the current state in terms of what's going on uh, with a particular item. When we want to know the history of what's going on, we have to do something additional. In SharePoint, there is version history tracking, but that's really for diagnostic use and it's not useful or user friendly in terms of what we wanna do. So today we're gonna see how you can set up your own custom tracking to track based on a particular condition for the change. So now let's get SharePoint smart. All right, I'm back here in SharePoint Online. I have set up a list which I um, called task cards. Um, you'll see why in a second, but this is just a basic task list. It's a SharePoint list, which I customized and has some concepts that should be very familiar to you. I renamed the title field to task, and then I have fields for assigned to who the task is assigned to. Um, I have a choice status field. Um, values for that can be new, on hold, complete, or canceled. I have a due date for the task, a priority level, uh, priority one would be the highest, and then I have two and three, a description field to hold a detailed description of the task, and a create a date. So all of this is just to demonstrate the concept that I wanna show in our video today. Now, I'm gonna go into the list settings and show you that I have an additional field which is gonna be key for what we wanna do. I created another text field called PREV status, as in previous status. And I need this field to help us know when the status field specifically gets updated, because I wanna take action and log into history specifically only when the status changes, otherwise I don't wanna do logging. You can imagine there could be lots of updates on an item, and really I'm just looking for those key updates. Another thing I'm gonna do right off the bat is I'm gonna make this look nicer. Using view formatting, I can apply a template and make this look a lot more attractive. So we're just gonna do that really quickly. I'm gonna format the view and I'm gonna use my handy SharePoint dashboard tool and I'm going to the uh, Let's see, task cards is what we want. There it is. That's gonna format that information into a nice look, uh, which would be a whole lot different than the out of the box SharePoint look. So I'm copying that code and I'm gonna come back to SharePoint and paste that in. Okay, so it's the same information, but it's highlighted and it changes depending on certain conditions. In the upper right, I have red for on hold. Um, I have a blue background for new tasks. Uh, in progress is orange. And then um, I have the various key information. Um, so it's a lot more user friendly, friendly way to look at what we're doing. Um, so you can learn more, play around with that in the SharePoint dashboards.com website. Um, that particular template is called view task cards. Okay, so here's all our information in the side panel. I just want to show you that it opens up when I click on my buttons I set up here. So what we want is that when the status field gets updated, we want to log it into this field that I created called history. History is a rich text field and it's going to allow us to use HTML formatting and build this log. So unlike the other fields, this is not a user input. We're just using it to um, display history of updates to these 
tasks. And this, this concept can apply to any SharePoint list record. Okay, so now we're gonna hop over to Power Automate. I've already got a flow set up, which I called status history tracking. So we're gonna walk through the different blocks of code here to explain what we need to do to make this work. And then we're gonna see it in action. So first of all, I need to listen for a particular condition. And so I use the when an item is updated um, block in Power Automate in my flow and I just point it to the list. So my list is called task cards. And that's all I have to do. And this just tells the flow anytime um, this is updated, go ahead and execute. Now, if you remember, I mentioned I only want to do the logging when status changes. So we're gonna do some things related to that. Another thing we wanna do is apply some formatting and we need a variable for that. I made a text variable, actually it's a string variable, um, and I just called that var history update. And you'll see where we use that in a second. Now, in order to find out whether I need to do history logging, I'm comparing between um, the status field value and the second text field I, I made called previous status. And only if the status value is different than previous status am I gonna do this. In other words, if there's an update to this list record, um, but the status didn't change, it's gonna fall into the no block and nothing else will execute. Um, so basically it checks, it'll say, no, there wasn't a change and it doesn't do anything else. Only when the status changes will everything happen that you see here on the left. Now this part's a little bit tricky, and if you don't have a lot of knowledge of HTML, this may look a bit cryptic. If you do, it should look familiar to you. This is some formatting codes to control the output in that to make it look nice in our history log. Um, so all of this information, uh, you can use that. And I'll, I'll provide some of this in the um, notes under the video so you can check that out. Okay, so this is a wrapper and a div, and what we want to do is prepend to the history. We wanna actually make this be the first record, so the most recent's on top. And we're inserting some information. Who was the user who made the update? When did they make the update? And then what is the status value that it was changed to? And that's about it for that. So we're putting that together in this variable we made, uh, var history update. And then down in here, we're going to update that same item. So we're just using the SharePoint update item. And then we pass along some values. For these required fields, you just pass in the same value that the record already had. The key update happens in history. That's where we're passing that formatted row in. And then we need to reset the previous status back because we need that to match the status value again so that this doesn't um, you know, continue to make changes. Okay, so those are the key steps in there. Let's go ahead and check this out and see it in action and it'll make a lot more sense, I hope. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here. I've got take out the trash on hold. I'm going to edit it and I'm gonna update this. Let's start it back over again. I'm gonna change it to new and save. Okay, so status is back to new and the Power Automate workflow is gonna catch that. So let's look down here and we can monitor and find out. Okay, so it hasn't run anytime recently. So that is one thing about this type of workflow in Power Automate. Sometimes it may take a while to trigger, um, and that's just part of that platform. We just have to accept that. So it will do the history logging, but um, it just takes a while to get to its process sometimes. Still thinking about it. And I can look and see previous executions of that workflow down below. Um, and just a reminder, it's still going to execute and check for the condition on all edits, but it's only gonna do the history logging um, in some cases.
All right, so we've got the update. See where it says nine seconds ago. We have that nice green success message. So when we go back and check this out, we should see some logging going on. All right, let's check it out. There it is. So it says, Will Cooper, September 30, 1.50 p.m., ticket set to new. Okay, that's good. Now let's see how this prepends the log, okay? Um, so I'm gonna make another update and I'm going to update the status to, well, it was already on hold before. Let's say it's complete. We did our tasks, we did a good job. I'll save that. Okay, so now I've updated the status again, it's complete, and that's going to trigger Power Automate again. Just have to wait for it to refresh. All right, so there we have it. It did its refresh again. Um, so we know if we go back in here, we should see the updated log. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in, view, and you see the newest entries on top. Now you can make it work either way, depending on how you set up that block in your flow, um, but there we go. Name of the person who made the update, date, time, and this time I set the ticket to complete. So this can keep running and running and running um, and we don't have to worry about anything. Now that we've set up this automation, it will automatically happen across all my records. This could be useful in a help ticket situation. If you're a manager or have your own SharePoint help ticket system, this can help you track and see what's going on, You know, especially when things stall out or there's been a long period of time, um, who took what action at what particular time. And it's especially important that this flow, the way it's designed, it's allowing us to detect a particular update by having that matching previous status field. Okay, so that's the main thing I wanted to show you today. There's lots of directions you could go with this logging. And the formatting code that I showed is something you can reuse. You can store that code snippet. Um, if there's a particular place you'd like to keep those, and you can copy and paste it and easily put in your own things. You might like to have a different shading based on the status. You know, maybe you want those log entries for hold to be highlighted in pink and the finished ones to be highlighted in green. You could set up a condition block in the flow for that. Additionally, you might want to send an email automatically particularly on status updates. So you could have send an email block in that flow that I just showed um, to expand that and enhance the capabilities there. So a lot of things that you can do with this. So this concept, this core concept is something you can expand upon and incorporate into all different kinds of processes and tracking that you're doing. So I hope you found that interesting. You can set up that formatting on the logging to look however you want. If you have questions or comments, or if you do something similar, uh, leave them below so we can hear about that. And thanks for joining for our video today.